What's up, YouTube? It's Bassayun here, coming at you with a new type of uh, video content. I have rediscovered my interest towards the old school Pokemon type of card game. Now, a brief history about this whole thing. I used to play Pokemon. I probably mentioned it in some of my earlier videos. Going back to my childhood when I was 11, 12, 13 years old, I used to collect the uh, Pokemon card game back then, of course, uh, released through Wizards of the Coast. And it was a big deal in Hungary um, because, you know, the cartoon was out and everybody was um, still chasing cards. It was, you know, back in the days when people still used to go out and buy things in the shops and... Not everything was based on, um, you know, you buying it on your computer uh, and just getting it delivered home or just playing computer games. You know, back then it was still quite rare that somebody was constantly glued to their consoles. We used to go out, we used to trade cards, we used to be out, whether it was raining or sunny, and it was great. I loved it. Um, um, but anyway, I'm already... Uh, you know, way off the hook there, what I'm trying to say here really. Today I have a deck profile for you guys and this is uh, one of the uh, old school Pokemon decks that I've put together um, slowly but surely. It's been kind of growing. I had a lot of these cards in my collection but I did um, obviously um, expand a little bit just to get this particular deck complete. And really just to start out with, I'm going to show you this fairly straightforward uh, Rocket Zapdos uh, promo Mewtwo deck that I have for you guys here. And I think this deck already showcases why Wizards of the Coast um, introduced the Rocket On format uh, after the Prop 15 uh, format because a lot of the cards in this deck are very powerful. We're only running these two basic Pokemons, and of course, as you can see, they both have an attack that allows them to get energy cards back from your discard pile. So, to start with, we are going to look at Rocket Zapdos. We do run the full playset of Rocket Zapdos, our uh, main attacker number one. Um, uh, with that Plasma attack for uh, one... Uh, lightning energy we deal 20 damage and if we have a lightning energy in our discard pile then we can attach that to rocket zapdos that allows us to build up to electro burn very quick very effectively if we don't see any disruption in the game and of course electro burn deals 70 damage and that's exactly the sweet spot that you would want to get to in this format most powerful basic pokemon will have uh 70 HP. There are a couple that are slightly beefier, like Kangaskhan or Snorlax, Chansey maybe. But most of the most of the powerful um, um, offensive basics, like Rocket Zapdos, Hitmonchan, Mewtwo, Electabuzz, Scyther, they're all on this 70 HP, so being able to knock them out with Electro Burn, of course, is really good. But even Plasma, dealing 20 damage for one Electric Energy is absurd. So we run the full playset and complement this full playset with the Movie Promo Mewtwo. Movie Promo Mewtwo, first attack, Energy Absorption, allows us to choose two Energy cards from our discard pile. I must stress the fact that this could be any two energy cards. Uh, they could be basic energy cards, special energy cards, uh, really any energy cards attached to Mewtwo. So um, if you do have those two energies in your discard pile, you are set up to Cyburn on your next turn. Uh, again, very difficult Pokemon to be really disrupted by energy removal because it can always bring the energies back onto uh, itself and of course Cyburn is a very powerful attack uh, with this setup uh, anyway three energies for 40 I think it's it's a very nice uh, little place to be at and this is it these are the only Pokemon we're running in this deck um, one of the reasons why Wizards of the Coast uh, was um, 
um, I would I would say maybe a little bit cross with this format is how powerful the trainer cards were um, uh, back in those days because of course we were limited to the use like we are nowadays with supporters and things like that. Now this deck is very much built around disruption. So the number one uh, trainer cards that we run here, there's quite a few play sets that solely do disruption. Let's show off the first edition one. So Rocket Sneak Attack allows us to look at our opponent's hand, pick a trainer card and get it shuffled back into our opponent's deck. This combined with Imposter Rogue's Revenge um, firstly allows us to put energy cards into our discard pile because we need to discard a card from our hand to be able to uh, play this card and it shuffles our opponent's hand back into the deck re makes them redraw four cards so we want to start out with Imposter Rock's Revenge and then play Rocket Sneak Attack to have a peek on what those four cards are ideally hit the trainer, shuffle that back in the deck, leave our opponent with three cards now I'm specifically not running Rocket's um, um, uh, the, the final rocket card that does the coin flip and if you win the coin flip you get to uh, um, shuffle back three cards from your opponent's hand into their deck because I think that is just that's too overkill I've always hated that card I think there is still a little bit of a fairness in allowing our opponent to keep three cards in hand and um, you know you have to you have to leave something on the table for these card games to be fun Plus, I generally don't necessarily like particularly trainers that rely on coin flip. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not running the, the final piece in this puzzle. We're just relying on these uh, uh, two cards to disrupt our opponent's hand. On top of that, because our Pokemon are, of course, very good with reattaching energies to themselves, we're on the full playset of the Super Energy Removal. Um, again, another really, really effective card. We do need to discard one energy card attached to one of our own Pokémon, and we can remove up to two energy cards attached to one of our opponent's Pokémon and discard them. Obviously, it goes without saying that this is super powerful. We can only attach one energy a turn. So if we are able to remove that efficiently from our opponent's Pokemon, we can get the upper hand very quickly. And we're running the full suit uh, of the energy removals, not only the super energy removals, but we also run the, four, uh, play, the full playset of the uh, usual regular energy removals. So the two combined together, very effective, and of course we don't really care about the fact if our opponent runs these, because we can get our energies back quite efficiently with Plasma and the energy absorption attack on our two Pokemon. Um, so these are our main disruption trainers, but we also run two Pokemon Tower, which basically shuts down, uh, well primarily shuts down uh, Item Finder. One of the reasons why I opted to run Pokemon Tower rather than running my own item finders is because we're already uh, looking at discarding energies for a super energy removal and we're looking at discarding cards for Imposter Rogue's Revenge. We also have a few computer search in the deck so I didn't want to overload the deck with a lot of cards that rely on us having to discard. Um, although item finder is probably one of the best cards in the format uh, Pokemon Tower will shut it down, so no uh, Pokemon powers, no attacks, and no energy cards or trainer cards can bring back cards from the discard pile into the hand. Uh, in some certain cases, of course, our Pokemon are immune because they don't bring the energies back into our hand, they bring it back to themselves, but we got cards like Slowpoke, for example, that can, um, or Dark Slowbro, uh, that can bring cards back from your discard pile into your hand, particularly trainers. Um, I think uh, maybe Dark Dratini or Dark, no, Dark, uh, Dark Dragonite, sorry, there is no Dark Dratini. Dark Dragonite uh, also allows you to search your deck for evolution cards. So it shuts down all these fringe cases as well, but it's primarily in there to shut down 
item finder. And of course, just to have our own stadium card in case our opponent plays with uh, their own, so we can always knock that out. And uh, finally, last piece of disruption, of course, we do run uh, LAS, three copies of LAS. Um, Yes, you could argue that last could be even uh, more evil once you use the Imposter Oaks Revenge, Rocket Snake Attack combo, and then run out of last if you know your opponent has trainers in their hands. Yeah, of course, that's a possibility. But again, we are mainly a disruption deck. We're not necessarily going to see all trainer cards in our opponent's hand. What is really cool about this last is it can give us more information again as to what is our what is in our opponent's hand. And I don't really need to go into a lot of details as to how, just how amazing glass can be. Even the um, even the later decks, the base Neo decks, would run uh, copies of this card quite often. Um, in terms of uh, getting the deck moving, we have three copies of Computer Search, just so that we can have an easier setup at the beginning. And if we are struggling with not having enough Pokemon, then we can go and find ourselves Pokemon. Again, it allows us to discard energy cards from our hands so we can set up our attacks on our Pokemon. So there is a multiple use for this particular card. And of course, we run three copies of Professor Oak. This is our only card selection realistically. We don't run any bill in this particular deck. Um, I think having three oaks and using them strategically can be good enough just to keep the deck rolling. Of course, yes, we are probably going to give our opponent additional cards uh, at the beginning of the game when we don't find a basic, but we don't really care because we run Imposter Oaks Revenge, so we can always reuse that card count back to four. Uh, so again, it's not a massive deal if you allow your opponent to draw extra cards at the beginning of the game. We got the three oaks, we got the three computer search, so that's, uh, that's plenty draw power and surge power uh, for this deck. It's quite linear, we have play sets of most cards, uh, it's quite easy to get access to what we want to see there. Uh, in terms of looking at uh, some more shenanigans, we do run two copies of Gust of Wind. Um, again, goes really without saying, we can just really choose what we want to attack. It can be quite um, uh, quite offensive, it could be a defensive card as well, depending what situation we end up being in. Um, Rocket Zabdos doesn't have any weakness, it does have a resistance to fighting, of course. Mewtwo has a weakness to Psychic. Uh, but we are not necessarily too uh, worried about uh, running into weaknesses with this deck. Gustavin is more like scooping out the, uh, you know, the uh, the early Pokemon, maybe maybe weaker basics, and just you know getting a, a quick KO on them if we can. We also run the one scoop up, and maybe you could run two. Um, I certainly can't see a problem with running two in this deck. Scoop Up is such a versatile card. It uh, is a Pokemon Center. It's a switch. It's um, pretty much everything you uh, you want uh, working uh, in one card. Of course, there is a bit of a drawback in you know all the energies go into your discard pile. But again, it's not really an issue for our Pokemon. They can easily get those energies back. So Scoop Up is a really good card. You could probably run two again, as I said. Uh, probably makes sense to do so. We do have the one Nightly Garbage run here, just uh, to be able to recycle predominantly our basic Pokemon in, back into the deck, um, just so we know that we're not going to run out from our attack uh, from uh, from Pokemon in our deck. Um, you could also use it for. Uh, energy cards but then again it's probably it's more in there for the pokemon themselves and then finally we run three defender uh just really for rocket zapdos electro burn attack rocket zapdos does 10 damage to itself for every lightning energy attached to it so defender works really well with this not only does it prevent us from harming ourselves too badly of course with four lightning energy uh you know, maybe even more. Ideally, we can run the attack with three lightning energies and then some additional 
uh, energies on Rocky Zapdos to minimize that damage. We can even, you know, reduce it back down to 10 and then defender sticks around for opponent's turn as well again. So we get double duty out of it when our opponent's trying to attack. That attack will also be uh, reduced by 20. Defender is an amazing card. Um, uh, so we run three copies of this one. And this is our trainer lineup. Quite a lengthy list. Again, you can kind of understand why... Uh, uh, what's he had an issue with this bit of attack choice there for you full heal energy uh, you should always run at least one full heal in some shape or form in your deck either by running a scoop up which of course you could see we do again scoop up could also I, I forgot to mention it also functions as a full heal by bringing the Pokemon back into your hand but I think full heal energy, it's a nice one of. You could even run uh, two realistically in this deck. Both Rocket Zapdos and Mewtwo's um, main attacks, they don't mind if you have a colorless on them. Particularly with Mewtwo's energy absorption attack, you can always bring this full heal energy back onto Mewtwo. Um, uh, you know, unless he's paralyzed, of course, if you get the right coin flip with confusion. Um, or if you manage to wake him up, or if he's poison, um, particularly full heal energy can be really useful uh, in those situations. And then just to close it off, we run uh, eight psychic energies for Mewtwo's attack, and I opted to run nine lightning energies for. Zapdos's attack. Um, the lightning energy is more important. We definitely need more lightning energies to be able to pull the electro burn off because we need three lightning for that. Whereas if you look at Mewtwo, Mewtwo really only cares to have two psychic on sideburn. Plus, he can bring back any energy onto himself. He doesn't need to rely on having them specific lightning like Rocket Zapdos does. So Mewtwo is a bit more flexible. You get obviously a um, your first attack, energy absorption doesn't deal any damage, it's still very overpowerful what it does either way. Uh, but both Pokemon can get going on one energy, which is really important, and Zapdos can start to get that early, early uh, damage in with, uh, you know, 20 for one lightning. Any Pokemon that does 20 damage for one energy, straight up, is amazing. Let alone the fact that he also pulls a lightning energy back onto himself. Rocket Zapdos is just pretty much broken. So um, I don't think this is a low energy count. Uh, again, as I said, the Pokemon can very much get going on one energy on their own. Yes, you could potentially run a couple of rainbow energies in this deck uh, just to cover all the ends. But I think um, um, with a bit of a... With a bit of a lucky draw, with maybe a computer search in your hand, uh, you can get these energies uh, quite easily and you can start attacking uh, very, very quickly. Uh, and of course, you can always win a lot of time just by disrupting your opponent's hand if you don't necessarily have exactly what you need for the turn. Uh, you can always just, you know, play a last or play uh, Imposter Oak's Revenge and spice it up with Rocket Sneak Attack, reduce your opponent's hand, win a bit of time and just start getting in with uh, 20 damage from Zapdos. Um, so this is it for today's deck tech video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the direction I'm going with, just looking at old school Pokemon of course. I will have more videos come up in this theme, of course. We'll still have Dragon Ball and Magic and, and all those goodies. But um, this is it for now, YouTube. Busting and signing out. Peace.